clipper plugins are probably the most stupid thing that you can buy in the world of audio. It might seem like paying $200 for an audio file rock is more stupid, but it's really not because the rock doesn't hurt your audio quality and you might like the way that it looks. Clipper plugins on the other hand, harm your audio and buying one is always a mistake. Let's first understand exactly what a clipper plugin is doing. Now I don't normally do coding on this channel because that's boring, but a five year old could understand this code. So let's just literally write out the code. If the sample is bigger than the threshold, then set the sample to the threshold. And as you hopefully all know, a sound wave goes positive and negative. So we need to account for the negative portion as well. If the sample is smaller than minus threshold, then set the sample to minus threshold. Please buy my clipper plugin. It's on sale. It's just $50. Speaking of buying plugins, consider buying my free free open source compressor plugin, I hereby announce version 2. It currently costs zero dollars and it's got new features, a new interface, fresh code, better performance, so grab it now while stocks last. For everyone who already grabbed the first version of this plugin, don't email me again, you already have the link. Just go to the email you got and click on the same link and the version 2 is in the same link. For everyone who doesn't have the link, just go to my website apmastering.com and you can find the instructions on there how to download it. So back to the video, why is clipping bad? One reason is it causes a huge amount of aliasing. Unfortunately, some plugins really are just that under the hood. And if you bought such a plugin, unfortunately you got ripped off. However, we can improve this a bit by using oversampling to reduce the aliasing. Let's give that a go. Let me tell you a quick related story. So back in the late nineties, when I first got started making electronic music, you could already do everything in the box. And if you had external hardware, you could record it into your computer and mix it all in your computer. So you didn't need to have any DAT machines or anything like that. That was old technology back then, but they were still popular on the secondhand market. Why? Well, producers with good ears at the time figured out that bouncing their tracks through a DAP machine could get hotter levels and sound better than just doing the digital clipping by pushing the master fader on their DAW. Why is that? It's because those secondhand DAP machines that were in demand had really good technology built into them so that they would overload gracefully. And one of the most important things there was oversampling. So that's why there was all this demand for secondhand DAP machines even long after they became technically redundant with computers replacing them. But there's still two main problems with this approach. The first one is that oversampling is computationally costly, meaning it uses a lot of CPU power. This is less of a problem on modern computers, but there's a second more important problem, and that's the fact that clipping just doesn't sound that great in the first place. So how can we further improve this to get a better sound? Well, one approach is to upgrade our math. We can go from preschool to elementary school level. An arc tangent causes gentle distortion. A hyperbolic tangent is a bit more forceful. Using logarithms can also be interesting and using square root is a more forceful version of that. And using a sine function will result in louder parts of the wave folding back on itself, which is used a lot in the audio industry. Or if you want to do something super weird, you could mess with some quadratic polynomial functions, or whatever math you want to throw at it to get really weird tones. And that's not even getting started on more advanced stuff like hysteresis. But if you're interested in that kind of math, you can just download the spreadsheet that I made for this video in the description down below. So although these are all potential upgrades to our original clipping code, there's a problem. None of this is clipping. People get really confused with this topic. They think where does soft clipping start and hard clipping end? And what's the difference between clipping and saturation or what is saturation and what are the different types of distortion? What is mojo and vibe and drive and overdrive and all of these words? What does all of this mean? The conspiratorial truth is Distortion is the marketing hype engine of the audio industry, responsible for more mysticism and bullshit than any other type of signal processing. Part of the scam is that the terminology is deliberately obfuscated to confuse you, to make you think 
you need 20 different types of plugins rather than just one plugin that does all of the classic types of distortion. So let's demystify all of this bullshit right now. We can sort all of the fundamental audio effects into a quadrant. Linear, non-linear, static, time-based. Time-based means stuff like reverb as their effects are achieved predominantly through time. And contrary to what you might think, these effects are actually all technically linear processes. Clean gain and EQ are also, technically speaking, linear processes. Despite the fact that EQ also has a time domain consideration, it's considered a static effect. Distortion is non-linear and static as it typically has no time-based aspect. A compressor also works in a non-linear way, reducing the level when the threshold is exceeded. But the most important feature is time, the attack and release knobs. But if you turn both the attack and release knobs to maximum speed, what happens? You start to hear distortion. That's because if you remove the time aspect of a compressor by making the attack and release zero, you've now got a distortion unit. In the most extreme case, it becomes a clipper. So where does tape compression, transformer, saturation, drive, clipping, fuzz, analog, warmth, tube, coloration, mojo, and all of the rest of these terms fit into our quadrant? Well, sorry to disappoint you, but they all fit in in the same place because they're all distortion. They all just mean distortion. So here's a list of some of the distortion related words which people chuck around in the audio industry and I've defined all of them. Notice how all of them mean distortion. Yes, there are different types of distortion, but there's not really any need to use a bunch of different words other than the word distortion. And if we want to be really specific about the transfer function, we can talk about stuff like hyperbolic tangents and the like. But the marketing powers of the audio industry don't like to be specific. They like to keep it vague to obfuscate all of the terms to confuse you into buying more plugins. So now we understand the terms at play, we can see the clipping is a specific member of the set distortion. And it's specifically distortion which uses a clamping function. So we can define it as just that. Distortion caused by a clamp function. Of course, in the analog domain, we don't write code, we have electronic components, and we can use Zener diodes to clip the voltage in a similar way as our clamp function. Because we have no sampling frequency in the analog domain, we also have no aliasing. So right from the word go, analog clipping distortion sounds better than digital. Some people like to use the term soft clipping for certain analog components, for example, FETs, but I think this is technically inaccurate. It's more accurate just to call this saturation. So once we actually just understand the definition of clipper, it's not confusing at all. If something's a clamp function, then it's a clipper, and we shouldn't use it because it doesn't sound good and causes aliasing, and we certainly shouldn't pay any money for it. And if it isn't just a clamping function, then it's not a clipper. And something that calls itself a clipper, which isn't a clamping function, is just mislabeled. They've just called it the wrong thing. After having said that, probably the first thing that people want to type in the comments is, that's just hard clipping. What about soft clipping? There's no such thing as soft clipping. It's just more marketed propaganda to confuse you, to get you to buy more plugins. Either it's a clipper and it's a clamp function, or is not a clipper, is not using clamp function, and then it's just some other type of distortion. So soft clipping, whatever that is, is just some other type of distortion if it's not using clamp. If it's not clamp, what is it? Let's say it's using a hyperbolic tangent. Well, then it's a tan H distortion, not a clipper. So there's no such thing as soft clipping, and anything that calls itself a soft clipper is simply incorrectly named. This is why, in my opinion, clipper plugins are a scam. If it's a soft clipper, then it's just incorrectly named. If it's a hard clipper, then it's going to cause aliasing and sound bad. And even if you have oversampling enabled, there are better sounding types of distortion available to you. And if you paid for that, then you got scammed for that one or two lines of code. Unfortunately, there's some really good distortion plugins out there which mislabel themselves as being clippers. And that's just doing themselves a disservice. And I would much prefer them call themselves what they are, distortion plugins. If you like hands-on practical stuff, check out this video on vocal recording. If you like more nerdy technical stuff, check out this video. It's probably the most nerdy video I've made on my channel.